so uh, good morning all hope you all doing good and staying at your homes safely uh, so myself uh, chandran subramani i'm uh, working in mercedes benz r&d bangalore so i have uh, close to 17 years of industrial experience and uh, i think last 12 years i was working with uh, mercedes benz r&d i think uh, as a uh, our whole world is going through one of the tough times you know after the second world war uh, this covid 19 this uh, issue is a whole world and the lockdown i think we wouldn't have seen this such kind of issues in our whole lifetime so um, but uh, during this difficult times uh, it also opens up an opportunity to look uh, uh, for innovative ideas innovative uh, ways of working or innovative uh, designs are coming up i would say and i wouldn't have imagined that uh, sitting in a remote village uh, in a farmhouse i could be able to give a guest lecture uh, to you people i think this this is a kind of an uh, positive i would see uh, during this uh, you know uh, pandemic days so uh, with this i would like to uh, talk about my presentation which is uh, i like to touch upon few of the buzzwords in the industry in the last uh, couple of years or the upcoming years the buzzwords in the industry what's happening in the industry and then what are the trends and then how we'll update ourselves to this thing i'll just share my presentation and uh, i would like to make this session as as interactive as possible so in that sense uh, you can uh, ask any number of questions uh, in between so it's not like just during the end of the presentation we like to go through the questions we can you can stop me if you have any questions or any uh, queries you can uh, stop me in between and we can uh, uh, have the session as interactive as possible yeah i'll just share my screen just uh, okay yes, thank sir. you so today uh, we'll have a uh, introduction to uh, no the industry 4.0 or uh, what we call uh, the buzzword indes internet of things so uh, what it means uh, it's it's the whole uh, industrial world terms this as kind of a fourth industrial revolution uh, we'll go through the history of industrial revolution in the coming days uh, but uh, the key buzzwords what we can learn today is about automation uh, the connect connectivity i think uh, we all connected now even sitting at our homes in a long distances we all connected so thanks to this internet of things and other major buzzword is a cloud computing i think you all be aware of this uh, buzzwords and the big data and system integration so these are the some key buzzwords which uh, industry is going through today um, uh, just to give a brief introduction to uh, this industrial revolution what is this industry 4.0 so uh, we all know like uh, uh, the first industrial revolution which is in the 17th or 18th century which is mainly due to evolution of um, the steam engines the weaving and uh, the machine machines like uh, the first industrial revolution which happened in europe it's mainly uh, driven by the steam power engines uh, the weaving machines or uh, the mechanized way of producing the things so uh, and coming to the second industrial revolution which is uh, in the 19th century uh, which is a major innovation in that uh, 19th century is electrical energy so thereby coming going from uh, steam and steam powered machines or the steam uh, other mechanized machines we the electrical energy has been invented and there it made a massive change in the way industries have worked and which leads to mass productions uh, if we all know like the ford which is the first uh, company to introduce this mass production or the assembly lines where a similar object a similar vehicles or a similar objects can be produced in mass numbers and prior to that it was always like yeah i mean somebody orders one design and they, they develop this design and then produce it and deliver it to the customer so but uh, during the second industrial revolution uh, where the mass productions and assembly lines uh, been uh, able to in, um, implement which is mainly due to the invention of electrical energy and uh, coming to the 20th century where we call uh, during the 1960s and 70s uh, industry 3.0 uh, which mainly due to invention of this um, plcs or uh, to an extent i would say uh, uh, computers like computers are being implemented into the industry that means where there are some kind of a repeated or a, some kind of an activity which can be automated has been implemented with uh, computers it uh, means you would have seen even uh, in a in a common term for example a lathe or a, or a, a simple me mechanical industry where uh, they could automate certain processes which requires uh, no more manual intervention has been invented 
uh, that we call it as industry 3.0 but what happened in the last uh, 10 to 15 years uh, i think we all uh, going through this kind of a huge revolution which we call it as a internet of things that means uh, if you would have imagined that 10 years before we all can sit at home and then listen to a lecture given by someone who also sits at somewhere. Uh, people would have laughed at us that is it really possible or not. But now it is, it is we made it possible and it's mainly due to the internet uh, revolution what happened in the last 10 years or so. And especially the smartphones and the, uh, the apps what we have. Okay, so this is, uh, this thing has been termed as a huge revolution in the industry. And industry 4.0, it's, it's basically this term originates from Germany and where they call this as the, the, the connected or the connectivity people has among uh, through the internet. They call it as a the fourth industrial revolution and which will change the way the industries are working now. Uh, that means like uh, the number of um, the people or the number of uh, labor inv involved in an, any other activity can be drastically cut down and we can automate lot many things with this internet of things and uh, yeah so this is we call it as industry 4.0 uh, simplest of example what i can give i think uh, we are all from the rural background and the, we know uh, the farming and everything if we, we thought like now nowadays the farmers are coming up with a, you know mobile phone phone based app to control the water flow or the start and start of motors. So these are all kind of you know a, a revolution which is happening and which is mainly due to the connected devices what we have. So, uh, is it clear um, uh, the speed I'm going or is it uh, you like to reduce it and uh, slow down? You can let me know if, if any uh, if anything is not clear there. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. So, just to uh, just to go through uh, once again this industrial revolution. Uh, as I said before, the first industrial revolution is mainly to mass production. So it is mainly uh, introduction of this mechanical production facilities and steam and uh, water powered machines, which leads to the first industrial revolution. Um, maybe I'll just a uh, little bit touch up on the history here. Uh, we all know uh, India as a country or a um, we all very well civilized even thousands of years before when the Europeans are not even you know uh, they were just like hunting and living like a uh, um, tribal people when, when thousands of years back but then in the last uh, 500 to 700 years they uh, uh, you know they bloomed up and then they started ruling the whole world so anybody would have thought why how it is possible or what is that made them to uh, rule the whole world it's it's mainly the innovations and the, the travel what they've done because uh, we we as Indians we never traveled uh, the world and we were not innovating enough in the last 500 to 1000 years or so and which leads to um, the thing that you know Europeans rule the whole world so it's it's mainly the travel and the industrial revolution what they done which made them to lead the world so coming to the second industrial revolution which is mainly uh, by the electrical power and uh, which also lead to the assembly line mass production so these are the second industrial revolution and the third we call them as uh, 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 introduction to computers which has happened uh, say around 40 50 years back so with the computers we could able to control a lot many things and automate the processes which are repeated and where a lot of human intervention is required and now uh, we have in this era of industrial uh, fourth industrial revolution where uh, uh, the connected devices, connected machines, uh, and uh, with with very minimal uh, people interface, the things can be produced, things can be manufactured, and things can be controlled. To give a little bit background, uh, what is this industrial 4.0? So this is uh, something like a more network centric, uh, app based, and uh, with very minimal user or the people interface. Uh, that means the lot many conventional jobs in the in the field of industries or the production will cut down and it's all be controlled by the uh, app based uh, or the network based systems and the more safer way of production that means like uh, where there is a, 
people working in hazardous chemical or any other uh, heavy industries uh, the number of people and the safety will be um, really high and the people interventions will be reduced at it and it mainly talks about automation and um, yeah and it, it mainly uh, this all these things can be controlled by sensors and monitoring tools yeah so it's basically industry 4.0 is is nothing but connected and uh, programmable industry so it's it's not anymore a conventional type of production where uh, the uh, person goes uh, eight hour shift works and comes back it's not like that and it'll all be controlled with the connected and uh, with very less human interface yeah and um, coming to the the rest of the buzzwords what the industry is going through now is uh, the artificial intelligence so we say that industry 4.0 it's all about connected it's all about uh, uh, controlling the systems uh, remotely with app based or internet based uh, devices but how is it possible how is it possible is by having this three keywords implemented in the process uh, that's like artificial intelligence uh, that means what it means artificial intelligence the machines makes their own decision uh, that means like in a, in a production line and assembly line the quality control uh, the machines can make their own decisions based on the pre uh, implemented inputs that's like we call it as artificial intelligence and what is that machine learning machine learning in a, in a simple world uh, you can say we are we train the machine it's like uh, you can imagine that a, a fresh student graduates out of the college gets into an industry and then you will be trained in multiple uh, programs or the processes thereby he becomes an expert uh, to deal with the requirements of the industry in the similar line a machines can be trained it looks very um, it sounds maybe a little absurd here but it's possible and it's happening the machines can be trained uh, so um, how it can be done it's it's by having kind uh, combining this artificial intelligence what we have and then training the machines with the knowledge what we have and um, to give an example and i i work in industry where an experienced person can judge a, a design by its its look or it's by uh, by his experience he can tell me okay this will work this proposal or this design will work or not by his experience but a a, a new guy has to take some more time uh, or he has to do lot many um, evaluations or simulations or the calculations or uh, uh, you know he has to go through a lot of processes to confirm yes this will work or this will not work or this is the right approach what we are trying to say here by machine learning is we are try to train the machine so that it it get experiences and it takes its own call based on uh, the history and the experience what it has gained over the times and this is uh, very much happening in the industries and where where lot of repeated works are being uh, reduced uh, to simplify uh, uh, an it companies for example where they develop a uh, lot of softwares banking softwares for different customers across the world and if the new customer comes they don't need to develop the app from the beginning and they have a huge database on their own so that's what we call it as a big data that one more buzzword in the return times and they can select the best possible available data based on the new customer's requirement and produce a new one so that means it cuts down lot many um, reworking and uh, in other way around it also makes uh, the uh, required to develop something new fresh is also cut down that means the jobs are also being cut down uh, is it a negative thing you may ask okay this artificial intelligence or the industry 4.0 we are talking about all automation that means there will not be any more jobs created for repeater work or not no uh, that's not right yes there are certain sectors will definitely get a big hit because of this uh, uh, industrial 4.0 revolution the machine learning and artificial intelligence but at the same time there are a lot many new openings in terms of programming or making the machine learning uh, models all this uh, different industries will open up yeah so uh, these are the main um, fact about the machine learning and coming to deep learning it's again uh, 
learning what a human uh, learning so the knowledge of the human how it can be transplanted into the machines it's it's like uh, we uh, the history what we know about development of any software or any uh, for that matter vehicle development or a component development all these knowledges can be embedded into the tools and thereby tools can take a decision based on their uh, based on the requirements this is what we call this as uh, this three buzzwords artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning uh, any questions here uh, see in the three buzzwords for thinking artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning So in the three buzzwords, when the industry like Romba famous are ke, similar to what industrial 4.0 we just discussed. Either um, in an artificial intelligence, now we are just we will be training the machines. Uh, that means machines uh, will take their decisions uh, based on the uh, the history and the experience what we give to them. Machine learning, apni uh, it's like uh, you have a program or a computer program or app ke, and you train the app based on your inputs. Uh, it's it's uh, as simple as like developing a software and the software le or uh, pudu customer or pudu requirements irukke avarku and the thevayana requirements you can just uh, uh, put it into the uh, from the existing customers and the tools so idu uh, one and the deep learning is it's again the human intervention the the know how of the uh, people working in the industry and the knowledge eppadi machine ku transfer pandrathu abdingra maari so it's like i am working in industry i have a uh, certain level of experience there and i by looking at certain things i can take a decision yes it will work or it work again this knowledge how it will transformed into the machines is something deep learning we are talking about idella industry le poitu irukke so idu enna na this things will cut down a lot many the repeated kind of jobs abina for example na ipo or car manufacture pandren car oda just to give an example or steering wheel okay or steering wheel manufacture pandrom steering wheel vandu or pudu customer varanga pudu oem they asking a new design for me and what i had to do is i'll go back and then i would have done it hundreds of steering wheel and the hundred lende knowledge is all eduthu i'll i'll give the best possible solution out of all this uh, hundred variants what i done before yeah, this is what we call it as deep learning so id enna aguduna as a manufacturer i don't need to invest on the uh, development once again that becomes uh, that makes my life easier so this is what we call it as machine learning or deep learning okay uh yeah so going forward in the uh, industry 4.0 or uh, internet of things what are the uh, new op- opportunities will come up okay um, the new opportunities of the but you know in recent times like you might have seen a lot in the internet Uh, data analysts and data science this is one big uh, chunk of job openings which are coming up you know people who upgrade themselves as a data analyst data data scientists are always welcomed across the industry you know what it means is available data maybe you get on the 100 years of experience irukku or vehicle manufacturing or a, or a component manufacturing and the 100 years of history and 100 years of knowledge how best i will make Uh, in terms of uh, parameterize panna poran and the data how to parameterize panni how i will make this into uh, a tool based thing where in company can use the data and the mari data analysts and data scientists are very much requested and the other thing is uh, artificial intelligent machine learning specialist uh, so it's again like um, uh, the the people who have this uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence in the background la work pandravanga in the in the uh, these are all uh, it's, it's like um, programming languages or the programming uh, know how irukra people where they'll uh, help to uh, have this machine learning and artificial intelligence implemented in the people requirements irukke and then uh, yeah software development uh, the new things but what it will go away is for example konjam conventional jobs for example in the travel agents because if i if i want to book for my travel my, uh, my my tour or my travel i don't need to go go to any travel agents i can book through all through app and the artificial intelligence and the the machine learning models of this uh, travel apps or the tour apps will guide me exactly my requirement if i had to say now if i had to go to tour uh, somewhere in a foreign location and i can the whole travel can be uh, optimized 
with the help of an uh, app or a tool. That means there more there will not be any more requirements of a travel agents. It's similar to the cashiers because we all already into uh, the um, cashless banking, the the cashless mechanism. So this will which this will flourish, and over a time, maybe another. Uh, Five to ten years. This uh, the digital money will be the only way of mode of transport uh, uh, transactions, and there'll not be any more cash or cashiers, the librarians, the postal couriers. I think you, you we are seeing these things. So these jobs are going away in our uh, timely path to come. This all this in uh, the jobs are no more uh, attractive or no more available to the people. Okay. So uh, okay. So these are uh, any questions here. In the with this introduction, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to come to uh, academics or engineering colleges or uh, academicians and students. What uh, we can, how we can be prepared uh, in terms of this uh, industrial 4.0 revolution, and we how we can upscale ourselves uh, uh, to train the students and also be ready to this uh, challenge. What the world is uh, um, posing in front of us now. So. Uh, or a students are you know you say the in the one or maybe i would prefer to divide yourself into three quadrants you know one is academics yes academics is very very important you have to score good uh, good thing good mark and uh, come out of your universities with a very good score that is very much important but at the same time you have to upgrade yourself in terms of your communication you know communication it doesn't mean uh, english le pesuradho illa language uh, proficiency mattum illa and also to know the current trends of the industry industry le irukra um, requirements enna industry oda needs enna adu how i'll upscale myself into it because enna as i said before today's world is connected world uh, we have abundant knowledge available in the internet and how i'll pick this knowledge and then make use make best use for myself is is something as an individual neenga da decide pananum because if on the in the current uh, uh, trend you know uh, we can learn the things on our own um, and there are abundant data is available but how effectively i make use this data is something is very important apro upscale to industrial needs that means like uh, what we are seen whenever we go to uh, campus recruitments or uh, or any uh, fresh candidates when we joining industries there is a huge gap between what the industry demands the current industrial demands and the way the academics or the the students are bringing in the in the engineering um, institutes that means uh, as a institute and also as a accommodations and also students you have to upscale yourself to the industrial requirements so thereby you know you can uh, you can compete uh, in the in the current market scenario how how these things can be done i mean uh, I, so as i said from the four years of engineering or the masters whatever you are doing the academics is is far most an important thing uh, it's it's always very important that in the academics ninga vandena concept learn manano the deep learning the basics are very important so uh, i was talking about uh, as a uh, institutions and as accommodations and as a student how we will be prepared for this challenge Uh, what the current industry uh, is posing to us uh, as i said academics is very very important and uh, in the academy it's a deep learning and understanding engineering con uh, concepts and also to pose a consistent uh, performance in the academics is very important uh, what we look um, as a as a industrialist is a consistency in the academics that shows uh, as an individual um, how good they performed in their entire uh, Studies or the academics. The consistency means to go to score a good level of marks uh, in the in your entire uh, engineering time and also the master's time. You know that's very important. And coming to the second thing, which is uh, communications. As I said before, language um, is necessary, but that's not the only thing uh, which com comes under communication. The language fluency is necessary, but that's not the only thing. But the main thing is interpersonal skills, persuasion skills. and also the influencing skills so these are um, certain important things and also the body language so these are important parameters uh, in, when it comes to communication and uh, as i said before uh, today's world the internet world 
there is a lot many data available in the internet it's it's up to you to make use and then learn and then be prepared with this requirements uh, with what the industry needs and uh, coming to the other major and uh, important thing uh, industrial exposure during the academic years it's very very important that students are get exposed to the industry uh, and you know uh, industry it doesn't mean that okay edo uh, or software company or periya uh, company poita i do internship that is the only way of industry exposure illa you can even visit the small scale industries uh, which is surrounded by uh, surrounded surrounding in your area so ninga koyamthoor erode area la irukkaranaala there are lot many small scale industries um, uh, just make uh, uh, monthly once or um, uh, at least one once in twice in the quarter or chinna industry visits plan pannunga you go uh, go and understand the way they work the way their uh, the challenges they face you get lot many ideas okay avanga indha mari challenges face pandranga adha nam eppadi solve pannalam or uh, can we build some new prototype so that avanga challenges nam vandu reduce panna mudiyum indha mari ella you will get some more ideas so i urge ninga vandu at least once in a, twice in a quarter or industry visit plan pannunga it need not to be bigger industries it can be any small scale industries which is surrounded uh, surrounding uh, in your area and try to understand their difficulties their uh, uh, job and then the the kind of industry they are and avangalukku enna difficulties irukko adha vandu try to bring it in your academics and try to build some prototypes to solve that okay this is one um, thing i like to give as a suggestion yeah yeah so and uh, the second thing is uh, the theoretical knowledge into the practical that means like you will be uh, reading lot many engineering concepts engineering books uh, how i will this theory what i'm reading is is can be applicable in the practical life is something you always look for look for opportunities to implement them and uh, since i am from a mechanical background a machine machine engineer and uh, the concepts which i would have read in my theoretical books i'll try to apply in the daily life or in the in the work environment what you are so and marina na it need not to be something from the industry side only you can even look for the problems uh, in in the farms or in the neighborhood what people are facing and how i can bring some the changes uh, by building some prototypes or and mari to solve their problems and the other major thing is uh, try to at least couple of internships during your um, academic years that is very much um, uh, required to know the the culture and the and the the change over you need to make yourself when when you are coming out of your academic uh, years yeah and uh, always urge to have the industry based thesis work for your master thesis or uh, uh, your bachelor thesis and this is uh, uh, in the parameters is are important uh, yeah coming to other major um, thing which you have to do in the uh, as a as academic uh, students is uh, innovating innovation so na modal sonna mari how why the europeans were ruling the whole world even though uh, india or uh, even the asia uh, culturally nam vandu romba advanced a irundalum more than 1000 years back and we were been ruled by the europeans it's mainly because the way they innovated in the last 500 to 800 years they uh, if you see any innovation anything which you using in our uh, day to day life to any machineries everything has been in, invented by europeans including medicines or anything so innovation is the only way uh, a civilization can keep themselves in in a uh, upscale you know uh, without having dominated by any other so since the europeans are innovated and they started traveling the whole world they are kind of in a upper hand so adina na namma vandu namma student idile we have to encourage students to innovate and come up with some new ideas that means uh, yeah ninga enna innovation days conduct pannunga unga idile monthly ones in a, in a class itself we don't need to be uh, whole organization based appadi illa innovation days in a in a classroom based innovation can be as simple as any simple solution you have seen in in a in the surrounding industries or in the surrounding uh, people who are living the uh, the problem you feel that's a problem and people solve that with some innovative ideas and the mari we uh, images or pictures which to discuss pannunga idu eppadi pannalam nu and uh, and also um, look for the innovations in the current trends in the industry uh, by looking at all the in- internets okay the next thing is uh, paper publications you know, students enna uh, uh, student paper presentation uh, publication apdinonna you feel like okay idu edho some high end uh, 
அவுட் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் கான்செப்ட் மட்டும் தான் பேப்பரா ப்ரெசென்ட் பண்ண முடியும் சம்திங் எக்ஸ்ட்ராடினரி அப்படிலாம் ஒன்றும் இல்லை லைக் நீங்க இண்டஸ்ட்ரி விசிட் பண்றீங்க தேர் சிம்பிள் ப்ராப்ளம் அண்ட் யூ ட்ரை டு fix it with some small simple solutions we can uh, put them as uh, journals or papers another thing is uh, at least weekly once in your classrooms la current trends pathi papers kondu vande unga class la present pannunga okay encourage students to present at least one paper weekly that uh, what he understood from that paper okay enna purinjirukke and the paper la and the paper uh, how this can be practical or feasible and the mari or discussions ku arrange pannunga that makes Uh, people to think that okay even this kind of simple ideas can be uh, published as a paper and um, yeah and other uh, major uh, thing which uh, as a uh, academic we should do is uh, inviting guest lecturers uh, so that gives you industry pulse okay industry that trend is that nadandit iruke so this is what um, should ask organize more often to have this guest lecture so that people can understand what is the current trend and then try to uh, get some flavor of industry and uh, the third and most important thing is patenting I think patent na i think ungalukku ella theriyum it's like a copyright you invented something you designed something or developed something and then you kind of um, bring this copyright for yourself patent na there are many patents a europe patent us patent or indian patent indha mari nariya irukku so you control uh, patent by patent bring what is happening is ungaloda design ungaloda idea ve neenga vandu safeguarding from the others to poaching it or taking it away so idu vandu you should encourage the students to come up with some patenting ideas but idu eppadi varum appadina you have to encourage them to uh, search some patents and then show them in the classroom discuss about this patents okay in uh, it can it can be of any industry there are lot many patents in the it digital world electric electronics so what is it the patenting what is it current buzz things of people are patenting in the mari weekly ones or uh, um, in the classroom you can discuss the patents or the current patents irukku idella namma discuss pannalam um, then it gives the student some uh, ideas okay um, yes these are the things which is happening in the current industry patenting ipdi poi irukku in the uh, if i am a electrical electronics engineer i should focus on these things so this is the current industry trend and the mari uh, they'll get some more ideas into it now uh, any questions here i think yeah i mean uh, general this is what i wanted to talk i just want to introduce to the buzz word uh, uh, words in the current industry trends and then also uh, to open up little bit on the um, the best way to use the internet and then uh, get uh, uh, the abundance knowledge which is available uh, and the streamline uh, your academics okay so um any questions here because uh, i'm almost end to my presentation any questions here uh, explain the uh, uh, patent okay yeah patenting uh, as i said idu vandu or copyright nama panni vechukrom myself i have some um, five to six patents in my name so idu epdina i come up with some new idea or or design proposal or illa or um electric electronics or new concept engineering concept develop panirukom it it can be as good as flying cars okay uh, you can ninga vandu kekkala car parakkara car ipo panna mudiyuma maybe it's not possible okay. the current trends ipo possible illa but i have an idea i have a design uh, which uh, which i feel uh, and the design which in another car parakkara car panna mudiyum okay and the design and the idea i want to save car that means like uh, there are um, patenting uh, offices in uh, i mean the government of india or europe or uh, us the many patenting offices so in which market i would like to patent my idea adha vandu nan and the and the current uh, patenting id contact panni i have such an idea and the designs are there irukku idha vandu nan save i want to save it if i if i re- approach them i think it's it's more of a legal process and then then we can patent yeah uh other patenting is one and also exposing the students uh, the uh, to the current patents what is that industry going through uh, uh, as per their academics maybe each um, each volume or each subject what you are studying there could be some patenting happening in that line okay and the patents along you can you can look for it and then bring it to the students table and then put them for the discussion okay for the this is what you are doing in academy but this thing uh, the subject what you reading is also used in the industries you know most of the time student career la okay now the 
டஃப் சப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் மேபி டிஜிட்டல் எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் ஒரு சம் வெரி ஹை அண்ட் சப்ஜெக்ட் நான் படிக்கிறேன் பட் அது எனக்கு ரியலி வில் ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல் இந்த இண்டஸ்ட்ரி அந்த மாதிரி கொஸ்டின் இருக்கும் ஹவு திஸ் இஸ் பீன் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டட் இந்த இண்டஸ்ட்ரி அந்த மாதிரி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் இருக்கும் தென் பிரிங் திஸ் திங்ஸ் பேப்பர்ஸ் அண்ட் த பேட்டன்ஸ் இன் டு த டேபிள் பாருங்க உங்களோட சப்ஜெக்ட் திஸ் வாட் யூர் ரீடிங் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் பீன் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டட் இன் சோன் சோ பேட்டர்ன் இன் சர்டன் இண்டஸ்ட்ரீஸ் அ சர்டன் வே ஸோ தட் பிக் தட் பிரிங்ஸ் அ கனெக்ட் ஃப்ரம் த ஃப்ரம் த அகடமிக்ஸ் வாட் த ரீடிங் டு த இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் ட்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் த கரண்ட் இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் இந்த டாபிக் யா any other questions sir kindly can you suggest us to few of the pat- patent uh, you are familiar with sir uh, i mean i can uh, maybe i can share with manikam some of the patenting um, you know the the links where we can look for patents okay and i think there are some okay, patent which is more uh, convenient and easy to easy right, to apply right, yeah. yeah yeah right i mean applying patent as i said uh, there are some organizations or some indes- uh, some control bodies which controls it i can share those informations also but to search okay. the existing patents there are some uh, uh, standard websites where you can look for indes- uh, existing patents i think it requires maybe for academics and all there could be some um, some kind of a login or some kind of um, uh, the payment based possibilities to access this patents also there so i'll share this details with uh, mr manikam and i think he, he can uh, introduce to you uh, you guys yeah? yes sir actually because there are a lot of organization they are bargaining lot of money for uh, actually patents also you can suggest right. a few of the good uh, patents that can be applied uh, for the students also because the students also are having so many ideas eh? because mm-hmm. they, they too can actually try for the patents uh, which is uh, uh, low of cost effective and uh, it is easy to get through right yeah? right sure sure yeah yeah sure sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so as i said uh, introduce to the students uh, this this three things i mean the paper uh, the going through at least one paper per week uh, Uh, it should be made as mandatory in the in the classrooms uh, which exposes them to the the current trends in the industry so which which makes them to aware as this is this is what happening in the industries and this is how um, i should shape myself so this this becomes easier for them yeah okay sir thank you yeah, yeah thank you okay is there questions sir you can ask me in tamil also that should be fine sir you can suggest me there is one more question actually be, in behalf of the students you can suggest me actually how to take the internship uh, opportunities in your industry or some other industry okay yeah uh, for the final year students and pre final year students what is the actually thing you can able, able to contribute for their welfare uh? Uh, yeah. as i said in this internship we offer i mean um, at mercedes benz so maybe i can share some the, i mean it's also based on uh, certain uh, uh, criteria in terms of uh, Uh, tests and the uh, and the interviews so uh, even for the in- uh, internships so maybe i can i can share some contact details so uh, and mr manikam can share with you and people can contact me and if possible and uh, we'll uh, try to help them i mean it's again based on the um, as a selection criteria and selection process yeah so okay so let our students be uh, let let them try yeah sure, try sure, if they sure. are eligible they can uh, get an internship in your company yeah for the five yeah, years we'll look at students yeah yeah uh, yes yes yeah it's a good thing yeah thank you yeah actually in the comment box one of the students have asked sir actually which is okay. the best machine learning language it can be used uh as i said like i'm from an engineering background i'm not really um, very familiar with this um, you know the 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 it or the software industry and maybe uh, i can check with them and get back to you i mean okay I, sir i i um, let, yeah. uh, let, uh, let them answer the question sir i will uh, be answer the question actually the sure. python is the most actually uh, the most popular programming languages can be used because of its uh, library it, it has actually so many open uh, it is a open source language yeah, so it contains so many libraries which can be useful for a multiple number of industries huh? they can able right. to support not only it but mechanical and some other all the majors they can able to support huh? this programming language even r can be used java can be used so many languages can be used but yeah, yeah. python due to its versatility and diversity of different packages it can able to accommodate we can able to create our to, our own packages also in it i think so so it is best suitable actually at the current scenario but the trends will be changing after 2 to 3 years because the technology is evolving so we should able to accommodate those changes i think so huh? right right yeah yeah yes, i think yeah, yeah. right i think python is one of the vastly used in the current uh, industry yeah 
Yes sir yes sir due to that it's uh, availability of so many packages for different uh, types of industries yeah 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 okay okay sir so thank you then i think if no other questions then i think uh, we can wind up or is there any other questions please yeah and regarding the patent links i think there is someone commented uh, will will share it uh, mr manikam and then maybe in the coming days and then maybe can distribute it among students yeah so so basically uh, i wanted to just give an introduction to the current industry trends and then uh, make you aware that you know uh, which direction because as i said before the knowledge is abundantly available with the internet uh, with everyone having a smartphone so it's only that uh, we should guide them to uh, find the right path so that they can uh, learn themselves yeah and uh, thanks i think thanks for this opportunity and uh, have a good day i think stay safe stay home